Okay, in this presentation we're going to review zero coupon bonds and how we calculate their interest and how we'd record them on our financial statements. So let's look here at a uh, cash flow diagram on a zero coupon bond. It has a, a face value here or a maturity value and in this case I have it at $100,000. And that would be out in the future here. This is a five-year bond so five years in the future uh, the bondholder would receive $100,000 if they held it to its maturity date here. There's no stated rate of interest on the bond and there's no semi-annual interest payments on that bond. What we do is we discount this face value or maturity value back using the market rate of interest to determine its present value or its uh, purchase price here, discounted purchase price. And that would be at the beginning of the bond here. Now, in this case, I use the market rate of interest of 8% and it had a five-year term here and there were no payments on it but with a hundred thousand dollar face value and then using this Excel function here I determine its present value or its purchase price to be sixty eight thousand sixty dollars so taking the difference between the hundred thousand dollars and the sixty eight thousand sixty dollars we get a discounted amount here of thirty one thousand nine hundred and forty dollars so the difference here between that purchase price and the amount received when selling the bond is our profit or an expense here that we have to allocate on that bond. All right, let's amortize the interest received or payable on this uh, zero coupon bond. And this assumes that we held it to its maturity value of $100,000 and we purchased it here at its present value of $68,060. So going down here to our amortization schedule, we start out here uh, with a book value of $68,060. That's when it was issued here on the, on the beginning of year one. And then for the interest that we recognize or interest expense for that uh, first year, we take the market rate of interest, uh, the beginning book value here, and in this case it was 8%, and we take it times this book value and we determine the interest expense to be $5,444. So that would be the amount that we amortize on this discount to this bond. So we would take and we would add this amortization amount here of $5,444 to the book value and then we, it would, we'd have a new carrying value here for the beginning of the second year. And then we just repeat this process here where we take the market rate of interest times the beginning book value here and then we get the interest expense that we recognize for that year. And then we just continue that on here through this amortization schedule. So at the uh, end of the fifth year in this case, its maturity value and its a book value here would be equal at $100,000. And you can see here that our interest expense would be uh, $31,940 over that five-year period that we'd recognize. And then that bond uh, discount here would be amortized down to a zero value here. All right, let's look at how we'd record this zero coupon bond on our balance sheet. And we're going to look at it in terms of a bonds receivable, a bond that we purchase here. And we're also going to look at it in terms of selling this bond before its maturity date. So I have it laid out in T-account form here. I've got the asset shown over here on the balance sheet. And then in this case, we're going to have a gain or loss on this bond here plus interest revenue that we recognize on the bond. And that's part of net income on the income statement. So let's look at this bonds receivable. We have a $100,000 face value bond that we uh, purchase here and that has a, f a maturity five years into the future. And we pay $68,060 for that bond. So what we need here is a balancing entry between the cash account and the bonds receivable account. And what we use is a discount to bonds receivable. This is a contra account to bonds receivable or it reduces the bonds receivable account. So we would have a balance entry here of $31,940 here. That $31,940 credit here plus the $68,060 credit uh, up here to the cash uh, paid balances with this bonds receivable of $100,000 
uh, maturity or face value we have on it. So this discount the bonds receivable, we use that to amortize the interest revenue that we recognize on that bond each period. So um, the, we use the beginning carrying value of that bond times the market rate of interest for that year and then that is what our discount amount would be here. So we would debit that uh, carrying value times the market rate of interest for that uh, interest revenue that we recognize each year. And over here is where we have the interest revenue. That would be a credit here to an interest revenue. And that is that discount the bonds receivable amount. So at the end of the, in this case, the end of the third year, we've uh, realized $17,647 worth of uh, revenue. Now, if we go back here and look at this discount the bonds receivable, we would have amortized it down to a uh, carrying value here or a, a net value here of $14,266. All right, we've amortized this discount the bonds receivable down from $31,940 down to a uh, balance here of $14,266 when we um, sold this bond here. Now, we've increased the carrying value of that bond at the same time from $68,060 down to, or up to $85,734. And that's the same as calculated, the calculation here where you have the $100,000 face value minus the uh, uh, balance here and the discount the bonds receivable, which is $85,734. So that's our carrying value and our bonds receivable. Now we go back here and we have to calculate our gain or loss when we sold that bond. So we received $87,000 in cash and I've got that credited over here or debited for $87,000. And then the bond's carrying value at that time was $85,734. That's shown over here. Now subtracting the carrying value of that bond from the cash received we get, in this case, a gain here of $1,266. So we would credit uh, the gain here uh, for $1,266. So that's how we'd calculate uh, our gain or loss and recognize our interest revenue when we dispose of a bond before its maturity date. Okay, when selling this bond, we have to recognize either a gain or a loss here in our revenue account. And we do that by taking the carrying value of the bond at the time of sale here and comparing it to the cash received. So in the case here of a gain, we received more cash than the carrying value of the bond. So we recognize a gain here or we credit our revenue account. In the case of a loss, we would have received less cash than the carrying value of the bond here. So we'd uh, debit our revenue account here for the loss amount. So what we're doing here is we have to make um, the comparison here with the cash received versus the carrying value of the bond. Now if we go at, at the end of the, after the sale is made, we have to close out our bonds receivable account here and also close out our discount the bonds receivable. And then uh, we would debit cash for the amount received on, the, on that sale. And then we'd recognize in our revenue account, in this case, a gain here of, of $1,266. So if we go down here and look at our uh, balancing accounts between our debits and credits, you'll see that they balance here. The cash for 87000 plus the discount the bonds receivable here, $14,266 in our debit uh, column here balances with the bonds receivable closing that for $100,000 and then recognizing in this case a gain of $1,266. So that's how we'd uh, recognize any gain or loss on the sale of this bond.